somebody new. <laughs> John McLean here with Making A Class. We are on episode four. We all knew it was coming. Steel. Going one for one on steel, or how to properly transition back to a steel when we don't go one for one. This is one of probably the most dreaded targets for the B Class shooter. At least it was for me. I hated steel because hearing bang and not ding was just so painful. And to follow it up with four more bangs with no ding just made it even worse. Okay, so what are we talking about? Well, we're talking about how important it is to get that first round hit. And we're going to talk about how much time does it take to make up those steel shots properly and improperly. Believe it or not, I feel that there is a proper way to make up steel targets, um, and there's an improper way. And we're gonna go over those uh, in the video examples that I have for y'all. So, let's actually, let's, let's, let's go to the videos here real quick. We're gonna show you what kind of times you can run on a simple target array um, when you do it clean, when you do it with a makeup shot, and then when you do it with an improper makeup shot. Let's see what kind of time differences there are and how much time do we actually have to play with. One, five, four. One, five, eight. One five two. Two flat. Two oh two. One nine seven. Paper, steel, paper, correct. Paper, steel, paper, makeup shot. Paper, miss, herky jerky, back to the steel, paper. One, four, eight. Two, one, three. Two, three, one. Okay, let's break this down a little bit more. Let's first start with the proper versus improper way to perform a makeup shot on a piece of steel. You'll notice that it was faster to continue the stage plan and then go back for the makeup shot on steel than it was to stop mid-flow to then proceed back to the steel to break the shot and then continue with your stage plan. Why is that? Well, on one hand, You've already started the acceleration of the transition, you continue it, you shoot, and then you start another acceleration for another transition. So yeah, you are adding another transition, which is adding time, but if you look at it the other way, doing the herky-jerky as I called it, you start the acceleration, you realize you miss, you stop, you decelerate to a stop. Then you have to reaccelerate the gun back in the opposite direction to get back to the steel target where you then again stop break the shot, and now you have to re-accelerate the firearm through to the next transition and finish off your stage plan. Well, when we talk about economy of motion, that wasn't very economical at all, was it? We've added so many more steps of what we have to do to accomplish that mission versus just continuing with the flow. And that's one of the things I think you'll notice when you look at the top shooters and you watch them shoot is that a lot of the times when they have a miss on a piece of steel, they continue. 
Sometimes they continue only for one target before they go back to it. Other times they'll continue the rest of the array before they go back to it. But what you don't ever really see them do is do that herky jerky to try and get back to that target. And a lot of the times, most people, especially B class shooters when I was doing it, don't take a second to, to have a, a nice, calm and controlled second shot to ensure you get that hit. No, hell no. We freaking fling rounds and spray and pray and hope that we hear a ding, which isn't very economical either, okay? So when you talk about the idea of how important it is to get that first round hit, let's take, for example, the correct way of going and picking up a piece of steel. And let's say that that takes two tenths of a second. Yeah, two tenths of a second to transition back to that steel and hit it. Now, what does that mean when you look at the big picture? That means that on your first time around that steel, you could take an extra 0.19 of a second to ensure that you got that first round hit and you would still end up better than throwing a fast miss and then having to transition back to it. Think about that. It's only a hundredth of a second, right? But a hundredth of a second, last time I checked, or, or 0.19 is still faster than 0.20. So you'd be better off. But even if that means you took a tenth of a second off, or you took an extra tenth of a second to ensure that you got that first round steel hit, you're still saving yourself a tenth of a second of an extra transition. So, more time that we're able to kind of rearrange in the mindset of really explaining why those first round steel hits can be so crucial and important when it comes to your total time. Now, let's go to our imaginary match. Okay, so we're there. 300 rounds, 10 stages, 14 steel targets, and two steel targets per stage. That gives us a total of 20 steel targets throughout this match. Two tenths of a second for every makeup shot on steel, and there's 20 steel, means that there's essentially four seconds of makeup shots that you could be taking. So we add that six seconds, or no, we add that four seconds to the 46 seconds of match time that we've increased so far, means potentially we could be 50 seconds ahead by making sure that we get that first round hit on steel every time. You add that with the increasing the speed in which you begin your transitions to your next target, and you increase the efficiency of your trigger reset and prep through recoil, you're at 50 seconds of a 300 round match. Almost a full minute. And there's more. We're still not even done yet. So I'll catch you on the next episode of Making A-Class.